During the dog days of August, the two-a-days, three-a-days, and the march through hell called Camp Canadensis, the 1999 LaSalle College High School football team had a single focus, a single purpose, a single goal. Return to the Philadelphia Catholic League championship game on December 4. The experts gave the defending champion explorers no chance of making it back. They said the realignment of the Philadelphia Catholic League, putting LaSalle in the big school red division, would put the explorers against bigger, stronger, and faster opponents every week with no easy games. It would be a war of attrition. Most of the teams were bigger, some stronger, and a few faster but LaSalle planned to match up against the opponents with a mythological persona, 11 helmets on one body, unselfish teamwork, the power of one. These are the highlights, as well as some of the bumps that protruded like landmines along the road to the championship. When the smoke cleared and the bruised, battered, and even beaten were removed from the field of battle, only two teams were left standing, and these LaSalle explorers were one of them. On Friday night, the 3rd of September, the LaSalle Explorers opened their season against the formidable foe, the highly regarded Colonials from Plymouth White Marsh, a suburban one-leg powerhouse. LaSalle, with seven starters returning on defense and six starters back on offense, proved to be a worthy opponent. Standing plays by Ben Bailey and John Poley gave the ball right back to LaSalle and a Bailey reception and run, coupled with a Marabella scramble, set up a six-yard touchdown run by Bailey behind the great blocking of the O-line. Second half became a defensive battle which prevented any further scoring. Sophomore linebacker Mike Graham gave the fans a preview of things to stopping a PW drive with consecutive tackles, forcing them to punt. Additional offensive firepower was provided by Jordan Mulrain and Ryan Parfit catching passes and running effectively after the receptions. Sacks by Paul Calistra and an interception by Kevin Doherty punctuated a stellar opening night for the LaSalle defense. The balanced offensive attack gained 111 yards rushing and 110 yards passing as quarterback Gabe Marabella completed 8 of 14 passes. <laughs> Saturday night, September 11th, marked a number of firsts. The first time in their long rivalry, the game wouldn't count in their standing. McDevitt was one of the favorites to win the newly realigned blue small school division, and LaSalle was one of the favorites to win the red big school division. Blood went to McDevitt on the 31-yard field goal by kicker Sean Hughes with 1.43 left in the first quarter. LaSalle's offense got rolling on successive runs by Ryan Parfit of 22 yards and Jordan Mulrain for 16 yards. A Gabe Marabella pass to Kyle Elliott was good for 16 yards, but the drive stalled and the Explorers were forced to punt. Offensive plays by Eric Griffin Shelley and Paul Calistra got the ball right back for LaSalle.
A pinpoint pass from Marabero and a great grab by Kyle Elliott, coupled with a Jordan Mulrain block translated into a 30-yard gain. Another pass completion to Elliott set up a 14-yard scoring strike from Marabella to Mike DiCrecio, giving LaSalle a 7-3 lead. Special teams coverage by T.J. Alexander and Ed Sabia pinned McDevitt deep in their own territory, and three plays later, they were forced to punt. With time running out on the half, Marabella went upstairs, hitting Mike DiCrecio and Ryan Parfit to give the Explorers within field goal. Thirty-nine seconds left before intermission, senior place kicker Tom Callahan coolly cleared the crossbar for a field goal from 29 yards out, and LaSalle led at the half 10-3. The second half started with a clutch interception by senior defensive back Paul McGurkin for LaSalle. DeCrecio's reception for 15 yards was followed by a 20-yard Marabella toss to Ryan Parfit just inside the 10-yard line. on fourth and inches. LaSalle's defense also held, forcing a punt and giving the Explorers field position. Ben Bailey broke loose for a 25-yard gain on a short pass, but once again the Lancer defense held, and the third quarter ended with the team's deadlocked at 10-10. McDevitt moved into field goal range with just under two minutes remaining, but a key sack by Paul Calistra took them out of field goal range and forced them to punt. Two seconds left on the clock, McDevitt kicked the field goal. Sean Murphy was perfect from 33 yards out as time expired. LaSalle's first home game of the year couldn't have been against a tougher opponent unless the coaches were able to schedule CB West. A heartbreaking loss in the final seconds last week to arch rival Bishop McDevitt Played on their psyche all week. Downingtown took the opening drive the length of the field for seven points, despite some hard hitting by Chris and Kevin Doherty. The ensuing kickoff return by Kevin Doherty came within a step of tying the score. LaSalle and Downingtown then exchanged punts, and it seemed like LaSalle was about to get back into the game when they forged an impressive drive against the Whippets. Quarterback Gabe Marabella hit Tom Gorman with a 20-yard pass and did the same with Ryan Parfit. Next, a five-yard Marabella run loosened up the defense, enabling Ryan Parfit to get open on the next play for a 30-yard pass completion to the six-yard line. DiCrecio then made a one-handed touchdown catch while his other arm was being held by the Downingtown defender. Unfortunately for the Explorers, another penalty on the play negated the game-dying touchdown and an attempted field goal carried wide. Downingtown took advantage of the LaSalle letdown and drove the length of the field for a 14-0 lead in the second quarter. Kevin Doherty returned the kickoff 10 yards and three Marabella completions to Gorman, Elliott, and Parfit moved the ball to the Downingtown 26. Interception stalled the drive and set up a 41-yard field goal with just seconds remaining in the half, making the score 17 to nothing. Occasional spurts of brilliance in the second half were mitigated by penalties, and Downingtown came back and scored 13 unanswered points in the third quarter.
Ben Bailey's 44-yard touchdown run late in the fourth quarter averted a shutout. The 36-6 loss to Downing Town was the first time LaSalle had lost two games in a row since September of 1995. Gabe Marabella threw for 171 yards, completing 11 of 21 passes, and Tom Gorman had five catches good for 79 yards. On Saturday, September the 25th, LaSalle and Father Judge squared off in the first ever Red Division League game, beginning a new chapter in Catholic League football history. Father Judge opened the game, driving the length of the field for a touchdown. The extra point attempt was blocked. On LaSalle's first possession, Ryan Parfit reversed fields and ran for the 15-yard gain. Quarterback Gabe Marabella stepped up to complete passes to Mike DiCrecio, Ben Bailey, and again to DiCrecio for a six-yard touchdown strike, giving LaSalle a 7-6 lead at the close of the first quarter. At the start of the second quarter, Ernie Barilli intercepted a pass and rambled 30 yards to pay dirt. This was the second career touchdown for the 5'8 LaSalle nose guard. Runs by Parfit and Bailey and a 15-yard Mallarbella pass to Kyle Elliott advanced the ball to the Crusaders' three-yard line. Bailey, behind great up-front blocking, took it in for the score, giving LaSalle a 21-6 halftime lead. LaSalle came out, fired up in the second half. A Ben Bailey pass reception got LaSalle started. And after punting the judge, a punishing tackle on a receiver out in the flat forced judge into a punting situation. On LaSalle's next offensive set, Marabella threw strikes to DiCrecio and Bailey and then had a pass ricochet off Mike DiCrecio to Kyle Elliott for a 15-yard gain. Penalty stopped the drive and LaSalle was forced to punt. LaSalle's exceptional special teams coverage forced a fumble, which was recovered by Paul McGurkin. Cross, Mulrain, Maveda, McGowan, Barilli, and Poli were all part of the wave, which caused the fumble. Gabe Marabella increased LaSalle's lead to 28 to 6 with a 15-yard scoring strike to Mike DiCrecio. Judge's next offensive series got them deep into LaSalle territory, but the defensive work of McGurkin, Graham, McGowan, and Poli stopped them on down. Father Judge did get the third quarter touchdowns, but both extra points failed. After three quarters, LaSalle was hanging on to a precarious 28-18 lead. A fourth quarter judge touchdown narrowed the score to 28-24. A pass for the extra point was stopped when the entire left side of the LaSalle defense with Kevin Doherty making the initial hits. LaSalle LaSalle took the kickoff on their own 10-yard line and passes to Ryan Parfit and Mike DiCrecio produced two first downs with under four minutes to play. Facing fourth down and long, punter Kenny Kemp kicked 63 yards to the judges' three-yard line. He averaged over 50 yards per punt all day. Emmett McGowan's clutch tackle forced Judge to kick. But LaSalle, only able to muster a nine-yard gain by fullback Ben Bailey, and they were forced to punt. Again, Ken Kemp drops a punt on the six-yard line with Mulrain, Poley, and Barilli dropping the punt returner for no gain. Poley blocks a judge pass attempt, and on the next play, a sack puts the ball on the judge two-yard line. 
LaSalle tackle Kyle Callahan is injured on the play with a tear to his medial collateral ligament. Then with 2.26 remaining in the game, Judge stuns LaSalle with a 92-yard touchdown bomb to take the lead 31-28. LaSalle went to work from its own 10-yard line, and Marabella passes to Ryan Parfit and Ben Bailey and Mike DeCrecio move the ball to the Judge 31-yard line. The next play, Marabella pump fake, and then hit Ryan Parfit in stride for the game-winning touchdown. Kevin Doherty's interception in run back ran out the clock and sealed the victory 35-31. On Friday, October the 1st, the LaSalle Explorers traveled to Plymouth White Marsh to meet St. Joe's Prep for the first time during the regular season in over a decade. The Prep was forced to punt after running just three plays on offense. LaSalle went to the air immediately as quarterback Gabe Marabella found Tom Gorman open on a first down. A Marabella run around the left side moved the chains once again. The Explorers were then forced to punt when the prep tightened their defense. The Hawklets facing a third and fourth mistakenly ran and Emmett McGowan and John Poley. Both on their next possession, the prep moved the ball to LaSalle five-yard line and only an extraordinary defensive play by Jordan Mulrain blocking a prep pass that had six points written all over it stopped them from scoring a touchdown. St. Joe settled for a 19-yard field goal, which gave them a 3-0 lead at halftime. Kevin Doherty almost broke the second-half kickoff and gave the Explorers good field position. A pass completion to Kyle Elliott. Strong defensive Ben Bailey runs, put the Explorers in field goal range, and senior Tom Callahan tied the game with a 32-yard field goal. Got within field goal range on passes to Tom Gorman and Kyle Elliott, but a long field goal attempt was just wide. Joe's converted a fourth quarter field goal from 28 yards, and LaSalle has one last chance. They rocked the prep and had them on their heels after a nice kickoff return by Brian Madera. Ben Bailey took a pass over the middle and ran into prep territory. A pass from Gabe Marabella to Ryan Elliott put them close to field goal range. But a tipped pass to a wide open Mike DeCrecio was intercepted at the line of scrimmage and the clock ran out on the Explorers. LaSalle played North Catholic on a rare Monday afternoon game caused by torrential rains all weekend, which forced the postponement of the game scheduled for Sunday. The Explorer defense dominated early, and the LaSalle offense started slowly, but a completion to Kyle Elliott got the offense charged up. Another good defensive stand gave the ball back to the offense.
Big run by Ben Bailey and a pass completion to Ryan Parfit. And Chris Doherty set up a one-yard touchdown run by fullback Ben Bailey, giving the Explorers a 7 to nothing halftime lead. The start of the third quarter, defensive back Paul McGurkin came up with a key fumble recovery, and the Explorers took advantage of the turnover when four plays later, Bailey hit pay dirt from three yards out. The Falcons next possession a sack by defensive standout John Poley forced another putt. A steady LaSalle drive keyed by a Marabella to Bailey pass and a run set up a seven yard touchdown run by Marabella showcasing some of his best basketball moves and giving the Explorers a 21 to 7 lead. LaSalle's final score came on a 210 yard touchdown run by Ryan Parfit traversing all the hash marks and following the blocks of everybody who made them. Officially, he got credit for 84 yards as the crow flies from the line of scrimmage to the end zone. Sophomore Sean Miller's key interception preserved LaSalle's second late victory, 28-14. Sal-Ryan rematch of last year's Philadelphia Catholic League championship game took on a special meaning when the team met and dedicated this game to their friend and football moderator, brother John D'Alfonso. More will be said on this later. There was a large crowd at Charles Martin Memorial Field on the Saturday night game on October the 16th. The LaSalle defense limited the Raiders to three plays on their first possession, keyed by a Mike Graham sack. The Explorer offense opened strong, scoring on their first two possessions. Five passes to four different receivers kept Ryan off balance and set up the one-yard touchdown run from Ben Bailey behind great blocking in the trenches. Harfit caught two passes, DeCrecio, Bailey, and Joe Vasala each caught one. With Ryan on offense after the LaSalle touchdown, Kevin Doherty's aggressive run stop helped get the ball back again. Ben Bailey's 15-yard run was followed up by a 30-yard pass play. Emo Ahankai made a great catch over the middle to the one-yard line. Ben Bailey scored his second touchdown of the game, and LaSalle had a 14-0 first quarter lead. second quarter both defenses got stronger especially the explorers led by the hard hitting of Paul Calistra and Kevin Doherty 
Ernie Burley's first non-touchdown interception short-circuited Ryan's only drive of the half. Gabe Marabella ran the ball to the three-yard line, which led to Tom Callahan's 19-yard field goal to close the scoring and give LaSalle a 17-0 halftime lead. Key offensive plays for LaSalle in the second half included a 25-yard completion to Ryan Parfit and a 44-yard completion to Joe Vassallo. Ryan scored one second-half touchdown, but Emmett McGowan shut the door on the Raiders. In windy Sunday afternoon, the LaSalle Explorers were up to the challenge to shut down the Roman Catholic high-powered attack. Strong defense and a well-designed offensive game plan, the Explorers mixed up the run and the pass with precision as the Explorers marched to the end zone for a 7-6 lead with a touchdown by Chris Dougherty. Second time in three weeks, Ryan Parfit would race to the end zone led by a wall of blockers. On the ensuing kickoff, Tom Callahan would launch a drop behind enemy lines. As the special teams come up big again, the route was on. a 21-6 lead and the game was turned over to the Explorers' patented swarming defense. The defense would hold Roman to 184 yards of offense. Ryan Parfit would rush for 113 yards. Quarterback Gabe Marabella will have another hot hand as he turns a stellar 10 for 13 afternoon. The Cahillites tried to mount a comeback, but the stingy Explorer defense would bend but not break as a tip pass by Jordan Mulrain into the hands of Kevin Doherty would fail another Roman possession. It was a total team effort on the part of the Explorers as the special teams pinned the KLites deep near their own end zone. 
Marabella, again riding a hot hand, would once again pick the opponent's secondary apart. One last gas by the Cahillites would be smothered by the Doomsday defense. LaSalle moves into a first place tie with a 21 to 6 victory. Sticky Sunday in late October would be the next challenge for the Explorers' run to the playoffs and the Red Division crown. A winless Monsignor Bonner would not go quietly. The Explorers' offense trapped their way into the end zone behind a seasoned offensive line of Egger, Black, Felty, Callahan, and Dougherty. try to answer but the LaSalle defense would prevail on a blocked field goal by defensive captain Chris Dockerty. Brian Pardiff would be off to the races again with another trap over the right side and the drive would be capped by night train Ben Bailey bullying his way in the end zone off right tackle. Dockerty, Barilli, and Graham would make their presence known as they would alternate on magnificent defensive plays.
Gabe Marabella would waste no time finding his target, Mike DiCrescio, before performing one of his patented imitations of the famous Houdini. Only leading 14 to nothing in the hot October afternoon, sapping their strength, the defense would energize the contest with a timely pick by Kevin Dockerty, and the train would chug over the left side and race into the end zone. Tuffed again by center of the defensive line. Marabella would take over and orchestrate a nifty three-play drive to be capped by a 20-yard strike to his favorite target, Mike DiCrescio, and a 27-0 lead. A quick three and out as Holy and Noon stuffed the Friars, turns the ball back over to the offense. Senior Dwayne McCarthy would take over at quarterback and conduct his own thrashing of the defense with a 55-yard hookup to fleet-footed Kyle Elliott. Warmed once again by the special teams, the defense would step up again and seal the victory with an excellent read by up-and-coming star Ed Sabia. The Explorers on a roll, 34 to nothing over Bonner on top of the division. The Explorers, coming off their fourth straight victory, have the unenviable task of containing all-Catholic, all-state O'Hara running back Kevin Jones on their run to a playoff bye. Behind the LaSalle Explorers' swarming team defense, they are up for the challenge. Bailey and Parfit would alternate as the offense powers their way into the end zone. The tone was set with a spectacular scamper by Ryan Parfit. As he is about to be snowed under with a six-yard loss, he reverses his field and jets down the left side for a seven-to-nothing lead. Before O'Hara can catch their breath, kickoff specialist Jordan Mulrain steals the show and the ball as he races into the end zone.
The Big D would swarm Jones again and again, led by the likes of youngsters Noon, Graham, Sabia, and veterans Holy, Barilli, and Doherty. Joe Calistra has his well-oiled machine banging on all cylinders as they dismantle a powerful Cardinal O'Hara attack. With a staunch defense and a balanced offensive assault, the Explorers, led by Gabe Marabella and running backs Parfit and Bailey, would have their way with the O'Hara defense. Sal would rack up their fifth win in a row and cruise into the playoffs with a first round bye. Barilli would make his case for the defense. The Twins would be a tower of strength and the offense would be rewarded as the much heralded O-line of the week by the Daily News led by DeCrasio, Doherty, Felty, Egger, Black and Callahan. This would put a cap on a fine regular season and the prestige of the first Catholic Red Division crowd.
Saturday, November the 20th, 1999, 7 p.m., Charles Martin Memorial Field, Ryan versus LaSalle. The stakes, an historical appearance in the first ever big school Red Division Philadelphia Catholic League Championship. Ryan quickly learned it would be a difficult night for their offense. Sophomore linebackers Ed Sabia and Mike Graham stopped the first two running plays, and the combo of senior Ernie Barilli and junior Emmett McGowan teamed to sack Ryan's quarterback on his first pass attempt, forcing Ryan to punt. On LaSalle's first possession, a run by Gabe Marabella, a pass to Mike DeCrescio and another Marabella run put the Explorers in field goal range. Senior place kicker Tom Callahan was perfect as he split the uprights from 36 yards out, giving LaSalle first blood and an early 3 to nothing lead. The Explorer offense kept the pressure on the Raiders with a Ben Bailey run 30 yards behind the outstanding blocking of Bob Felty, Craig Dockerty, and Jason Egger. Kyle Elliott made a diving catch for a first down, eating up more of the clock. In the second quarter, Jordan Mulrain made the defensive play of the game, tipping a short touchdown pass out of the reach of the open wide receiver. Buoyed by this play, the entire defensive line joined in on the next tackle, followed by sacks from Emmett McGowan and Ernie Barilli. The rested offense came back onto the field and reeled off 30 yards on a Marabella pass to Bailey. A 20-yard scramble by Marabella. A 20-yard run by Bailey to the one-yard line behind the great blocking of Tim Black, Bob Felty, and Greg Dockerty. Bailey followed a crushing lead block from Chris Dockerty, while Mike DiCrecio and Kyle Callahan moved the defensive line back into their end zone for an easy LaSalle touchdown to go up to their 10-0 lead at the half. The offense continued to roll on a run by Parfit of 10 yards, Marabella for 10 and for 5 yards, and a Bailey bull rush up the middle for 10 yards, taking precious time off the clock. When Ryan's offense finally got the ball back, they were met by the entire LaSalle line for no gain. And when they tried to pass, Tom Gorman stepped in for an interception. Chris Dockerty busted 10 yards up the middle for a first down, and Ben Bailey and Ryan Parfit did the same behind an offensive line which had taken over the game. The defense, playing with equal fervor, tipped a Ryan pass, which sophomore linebacker Ed Sabia intercepted and was off to the races. After a 35-yard return, Sabia was caught at the 10-yard line and dragged the defender five yards before having the ball punched from his grasp. Kevin Dockerty on the dead run scooped up the ball and dove for the pylon, 
giving LaSalle another six points and a 16 to nothing fourth quarter lead. Closing runs of 12 and 15 yards by Ben Bailey and Captain Chris Dockerty left Archbishop Ryan with only enough time for a Hail Mary. Kevin Dockerty put the nail in the coffin for the Raiders with an interception as the clock expired. August's dream to get back to the championship game had come to fruition. The dog days in August, Camp Canadensis, and all the other sacrifices were now really worth it. This year's Turkey Bowl between LaSalle and St. Joe's Prep could not have been played in worse weather. LaSalle's defense opened fast. Super sophomore Mike Graham got a sack on the first play of the game. LaSalle's special teams, the best of the Catholic League, covered Ken Kemp's punt and Ernie Burley's jarring tackle on the preps Ed Turner, an all-Catholic receiver, knocked him out of the entire game. Ernie Burley and John Poley sacked the prep substitute quarterback, 6'4", Mike McGann. Down but not out, McGann picked himself up and completed a 46-yard scoring pass to Turner's substitute, Mike Reese. Senior captain Chris Dockerty broke through to block the extra point. Another sophomore, Brian Noon, made the key defensive play on the prep's next series to force them to punt. LaSalle went to the air, completing a 40-yard pass to Ryan Parfit. A clutch third down catch by Mike DiCrecio from Gabe Marabella placed the ball on the three-yard line. Dockerty, playing both ways, scored the touchdown, and senior place kicker Tom Callahan gave the Explorers the lead 7-6. The second quarter prep possession was stopped by a Kevin Dockerty interception. Gabe Marabella's run brought LaSalle to the prep's 15-yard line. Unfortunately, an interception thwarted the drive, and the Hawklets drove the field, eventually scoring on a 29-yard pass play from McGann East. With the prep leading 21-7, LaSalle's defense raised their level of play in the second half. Sacks by Ernie Barilli. Mike Graham disrupted the prep attack. Another Mike Graham tackle got the ball back for the Explorers. Their drive stalled despite a nice completion by Gabe Marabella to Mike DiCrecio. LaSalle's defense applied the pressure as Mike Graham made another sack, forcing the prep to punt once again. Senior Joe Vassallo made a circus catch and an acrobatic escape from two defenders to go 41 yards for a touchdown. Another clutch extra point by Tom Callahan brought LaSalle to within a touchdown, 21 to 14, midway through the third quarter. The defense fed off the energy they got from the offense's success. Paul Calistra and Emmett McGowan combined for another sack, which enabled the offense to get the ball back again. A Marabella pass to Chris Dockerty, who ran over three prep defenders en route to a 25-yard gain, moved the Explorers into prep territory. Brian Parfit's tough run got LaSalle in the 14-yard line. Fourth and goal, LaSalle went for it. All league defensive back Paul Calistra entered the game on offense and pulled a rabbit out of his hat, making an impossible diving catch in a muddy, slippery end zone. The extra point was thwarted by the muddy turf. Defensive stalwarts John Poley and Mike Graham got yet another sack on the prep quarterback and forced the Hawkwoods to punt. A 30-yard run by Ryan Parfit got LaSalle inside the 50, and a depth Ken Kemp punt pinned St. Joe's on their own two-yard line. 
On the first offensive play, the Preps' defensive pressure forced a fumble. The sixth LaSalle turnover made this year's Turkey Bowl history. LaSalle still holds a decided edge in Thanksgiving Day games against St. Joe's Prep, 18-6. On a warm, balmy Saturday night in December, the top two seeds in the big school red division faced off for the Philadelphia Catholic League Championship. LaSalle's stingy defense held Roman on the first series and forced them to punt. LaSalle also went three and out and punted. Jordan Mulray nailed the Roman punt returner before he could get on track. Ryan Parfit ran over the right side and cut to the outside and picked up 26 yards as LaSalle's initial first down of the night. The drive stalled and Roman once again was on the attack early in the second quarter of a scoreless game. LaSalle's swarming defense sacked Roman's quarterback and on the next play, Schmidt went long. Mulrain timed his leap perfectly and knocked down the pass. Roman sprinter Derek Clayton went 21 yards for a touchdown, giving Roman a 7-0 lead. But Chris Dockerty did a great job containing until help arrived. The half ended on this play with Roman leading 7-0. Opening the second half, Gabe Marabella hit Ben Bailey for a 15-yard gain, but Roman's defense stiffened and LaSalle had the punch. Roman's Derek Clayton broke a few tackles after initially being stopped at the line of scrimmage and went 55 yards for a touchdown. Kevin Doherty returned the kick to the 30, but LaSalle went three and out. LaSalle's swarming defense stopped Roman and forced them to punt. A Gabe Marabella completion to Mike DiCrescio was good for 18 yards and set up the offensive play of the night for the Explorers. Captain Chris Doherty took a handoff and hit the left side untouched and bolted 55 yards to pay dirt, cutting Roman's lead to 14-7 and swinging the momentum over to LaSalle. On Roman's next possession, they controlled the ball for 9 minutes and 23 seconds, culminating a 65-yard drive with a touchdown to ice the game at 21-7. of a season, every championship caliber team faces a defining moment which establishes its character and tests its mettle. The 1999 LaSalle College High School football team did not experience this test on the gridiron, but in the locker room. On Thursday, October 14th, head coach Joe Calistra gathered his team after practice for the unenviable task of informing them that their beloved friend, mentor, and football moderator, Christian brother John D'Alfonso, had once again been diagnosed with cancer. Only nine months earlier, brother John had bravely battled and beaten this dreaded disease. Deafened by the silence, the team quietly decided to dedicate the Archbishop Ryan game to brother John. On Saturday, October 16th, the explorers arrived at Charles Martin Memorial Field in northeast Philadelphia, ready to play, and play they did. This rematch of last year's Philadelphia Catholic League Championship game against the proud, tough, talented Raider team was no contest. 
Brother John's boys prevailed, 17 to 7. Brother John lives every day with Jesus in his heart and will remain a beacon for LaSalle College High School football players to emulate forever. Brother John, with the season winding down and only the football banquet remaining, the seniors, on behalf of the entire team, would like to take this opportunity to thank you for being our moderator. Please remember us. We'll never forget you. Brother John, thank you for all you do for us and for being the calming influence we need in our sometimes hectic, frantic lives. Brother John, you have shown us by your example how we should live our lives. By, by emulating you, we have learned how to win the most important championship of them all in the game of life. Hey, Brother John, you know we missed you all season and you were always in our thoughts and we hope you get better soon. Uh, I don't, brother John, CJ, obviously. Uh, could be get better. Everybody misses you. You're a big influence and all. And for all of us, could be get back here. Get better. Brother John, thank you for four years of support, and thank you for more importantly being a good friend. Thanks, brother John. We'll never forget you. Brother John, we miss you. Can't wait till you come back. Brother John, thanks for always being there. Get well. Thanks a lot, brother Paul, guys. It's 40 gave me last year. Brother John, we hope you get better soon. You're in our hearts and in our minds. Brother, we very much this year, but the influence before will impact us for the rest of our lives. Brother, thanks for inspiring us to do our best week in and week out and for the rest of our lives. Thanks for the past four years and hope you get better soon. Thanks for always being around, brother. Uh, get better soon. Okay. Thank you, brother. Uh, keep fighting, and you're always in our thoughts. Well, thanks a lot for the past four years. It's been great to have you on our side. Hope you get better soon. Brother, hope you get better soon in our prayers. Brother, you've been a great influence for me. Thanks a lot. Uh, brother, thanks a lot for the uh, last four years. Uh, get well soon. Each day I live, I want to be a day to give the best of me I'm only one but not alone my finest day is yet unknown I broke my heart for every game to taste the sweet 